And today on Mind, Mood and Food, we are talking about seeing the grey in black and white thinking, which is a fab title for almost bomby night. Very, very close. Or, you know, we're practically at bomby night, I think, this weekend. So what are we talking about, Margaret? This is quite a cryptic title. It is. It is. It's something I come across time and time again with clients or just people in general, really. Black and white thinking, also known as all or nothing thinking. Mm-hmm. So it's the inability to bring together both the positive and negative perceptions of yourself, of others, or circumstances circumstances into that realistic whole view. Quite a lot of the time people struggle with what are really cognitive distortions and often think in absolute extreme, believing that something's all good or bad without that middle ground, that mm. that greyness. So this is what I'll be focusing more on today. I have got some notes if you don't see me looking anywhere in particular. <laughs> I'm looking at my notes. But it, it's really not uncommon for people who struggle with black and white thinking to to swing from that one extreme perception to the other. And it really challenges these people to how they actually perceive themselves or it can cause instability in relationship and cause really, really strong mood swings as well. I don't know whether you've got any experience of, of black and white thinking or but they can it can come up in so many different things and it's normally quite a lot of words actually indicate you're dealing with this distortion which if people frequently use the words always, never, impossible, failure. Mm. I'm, I'm thinking. Give us some. Go, give us some examples. But um, in terms of like food, that kind of thing, I'm thinking um, all or nothing. As in, right, that's it. I'm going on a diet. I'm being really strict. I'm doing it, and then it's it can feel really difficult, like a mountain to climb. So then, the minute you do like one, have one treat, or do something that's slightly off track, then it's like shock it all because it's all gone wrong now so forget it ruined it so that kind of thing is yeah is what's coming to mind even to the point of a lot of people oh i'll start my diet on monday yeah okay um or that feeling that as you just said that they've just cocked it all up so what's the point i may as well just start again another day but why? Why start again another day? Or that feeling that you've got to be have all your ducks in a line to do anything at all. So that feeling of perfection, that feeling that you're going to be an absolute failure if you just step slightly out of your zone. Or that, you know, I ought to do this, that kind of thing. So it, it is really that you're dealing with it a, a, dis- a distorted perception and whether it's of something in results in a good or specific attitude towards feelings or even if you've had something like his has actually got you a bad result it's seeing the light in that and saying okay mm. this happened but why did it happen? Why did it happen that way? And what can I learn from it? Whereas people in black and white thinking actually just sort of kind of go into that, yeah, it was all me. I'm in a disaster. I've done that myself. I can't see any way forward. Blah. <laughs> yeah, the word that um is coming to mind is balance because black and white thinking is not balanced, is it? It's all something, yeah. seeing something is either very bad or very good. 
Um, and it does cross over, interestingly, into some of the other previous episodes, even the previous one that, that we released on shadow works like the shadow side is not all bad there is things to learn I think the one before that was the one that you did on self-sabotage and seeing that that's not all negative because it's like understanding those lessons so there's there's nothing black and white really is there in terms of anything that we think about or experience and incorporating the gray is really teaching you to utilize often just that wide spectrum that separates the black and white so i've got some helpful exercises for people mm. that can really start you thinking about you know seeing this gray and just getting into that that nothing really is black and white that is grey there say I'll give you an example say your friend actually cancels plans with you last minute a lot of the time within black and white thinking people will think that ah, my friend just doesn't want to spend time with me whether let's just go through another different kind of scenarios maybe your friend was sick maybe your friend actually had to get some work done I've done this before. You've actually accidentally double booked something. Or you've got no money to do what you planned. Mm. Or just they haven't got the energy that we were hoping to have. So it's seeing the other scenarios in the situation rather than going to the absolute black doom and gloom that is what most people who have black and white thinking often go to the worst case scenario yeah and it's because we make it about us when it's never about us so this this thing about why has this happened if it's involving another person it's you know we're all just thinking about ourselves mostly so it's it's usually like you say that all those scenarios were about the friend the other person Yep. that you know they were tired didn't have money they didn't, and, and but in your head as the one that has been cancelled on it's always it it's always something to do with me yeah like, really you're not that important you're not going to be <laughs> you're not going to be at the forefront of everyone else's mind even though we think that we're the center of everyone's world not really <laughs> that's what I always tell people you know and it's quite a relief to realize that you're not that important and that everyone else isn't walking around thinking about you all the time I was listening to something uh, the other day and he was explaining it. uh, I think he's a psychologist really well um, about, you know, being the star in your own movie and you're the star in your movie and all the people around are like supporting actors and actresses. The people that are close to you, they are like your supporting actors and actors. But most people are just extras in your movie, like the postman or the guy at the Tesco checkout or whatever. You know, you, you're never going to give them a second thought once you've gone, but they're the starring role in their movie and you're the extra in their movie. So when you're thinking, oh, I messed up at the tail or I've done something silly or and then you're going home thinking about it for three hours. They would have forgotten about it. not second. on their mind, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even know you. They're not going to waste their time. They're too busy thinking what they look like and what they've just done because yeah. they're in their own movie. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, yeah. And... um. Another one um, is actually, do you have proof of this circumstance mm. is black and white? This is quite a powerful one um, and it can really get my clients thinking. Just that question, is it true? Yeah. Are you actually relying on logic? Are you relying on your emotions in that situation? And yeah. have you ever been able to work through a similar situation? And if you did, how did you do it? Yeah, I use that a lot to... with yeah. clients that when people are worried about other people's opinions of them, which is what we're kind of talking about here, if it's involving someone else and 90-something percent of the time, if you ask that first question or... 
there's a flow chart that I always give to my clients. It's kind of a bit funny. It's a bit tongue in cheek, but it's it's it starts off like, did you hear them say it? Mm. Yes, no. And if you didn't hear them say it, you go, don't worry about it. And if you did hear them say it, it's like, well, do you know this person? Do you not know this person? If you don't know this person, don't worry about it. And the funny thing is, all roads lead to don't worry about it pretty yeah. much. <laughs> but that <laughs> first, the first thing of did you hear them say it is what you're talking about there. Have you got proof? Yeah. Because mostly it's not. It's your emotions and your your shit that you you've got going yeah. on in your mind. So it knocks most of the most of the worry out straight away. And that saying that, yeah, you 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 know this is your film or this is your this is your book, for instance. Is this chapter within your book actually realistic, or are you just writing it along? It is is absolute fiction. So, it has this actually really happened, and that can stop a lot of this black and white thinking in its tracks is this just a story that is going through your head or is there actual some proof to this going on and it really gets gets clients thinking as well some words to consider trying substituting that the words i mentioned before like the always substitute mm. sometimes yeah or i'm noticing that or I am flexible enough to. Mm. So just kind of changing those perceptions around and noticing the words you do say first is like I always say awareness, awareness, awareness. And it, this is like NLP. I haven't studied NLP, but like this, your words and your language is so important and not just what you say out, but what you say in here. So if you're saying, I'm always eating rubbish or I'm always doing this bad or that you know it's like yeah you're just you're just convincing yourself that you know there's no hope it's just always so bad whereas if occasionally you trip up and do this or you know you sometimes fall off the wagon and have the treat or whatever that's like yeah we all do that you know it's yeah, it's exactly. a little bit less severe isn't it and yeah. more compassion and forgiveness can come in for yourself then instead of thinking of it as horrendous yeah it's about modifying how you express your thoughts and feelings so instead of saying this is a disaster change that around a bit I'm having the feeling that it's a disaster or say god she's so perfect change that around a bit I'm having the thought that she's perfect mm. so it's having it's the feelings and thoughts that are bringing this on rather than actual solid actual evidence so you're acknowledging the thought and the feeling you're acknowledging what is real and yeah. thoughts or feelings yes are always valid and it's important to acknowledge them but is that thought and feeling the actual truth absolute truth yeah and it but it's very rarely because it's it's our own perception isn't it yeah absolutely and we are just viewing the world through our <laughs> goggles of many colors they're not always <laughs> rose tinted either are they oh god no no definitely not i think it's like this this reminds me a lot bit as well of um you know working with people with anxiety and, and and knowing that my journey with anxiety it's like if there's something that I'm not comfortable with or it's a new challenge or something it tends to be catastrophic thinking kicks in which isn't maybe another word for this black and white thinking it's it's like dealing with technology and I had something cropped up last night because I've got this problem with my storage and it, I've known I've known I've known that it's coming to a head because it's like I'm gonna either have to sort out stuff and delete stuff and just sort things out or I'm gonna have to buy more storage and obviously sorting stuff out is preferable um and it's kind of creaking at the minute but it, we have had a lovely weekend and busy weekend and everything and then I kind of saved something last night you know trying to get get ahead of for this week and of course it chooses that moment to really start collapsing and creaking which then means you know if your storage gets hit 
completely out maxed out you can't even get some of it then it snowballs because somebody says oh an email I sent to was bounced back that's strange and it's like oh my god oh my god and so my husband was trying to help me with it but my immediate reaction is oh I can't deal with it it's kind of like too just <laughs> can't cope with it and you know it's half past 10 at night so it was not the right time but it's because we've been having lovely time we've had a day out um but that's that my initial reaction is just like oh it's just it's the end of the world it's the end of the world it's a total <laughs> problem it's a disaster you know it's that black and white thinking mm-hmm. um extreme thinking yeah and it's if you are that kind of person that is a bit more like triggered kind of easily that's why you need lots of different tools and support and all of the things to help you to see that gray because you know he's very much what, what are you going on about it's yeah it's a slight problem that needs to be resolved and we'll just have to deal with it and that's more in the gray isn't it it's like yeah. well yeah so there's there's some possible actions that we can do here there's choices and it's just about choosing the right one and and if you do go to that extreme you can't think straight either because you you know all the way our brain works the prefrontal cortex shuts down when you're panicking and you're in fight or flight and it's just like rah. yeah absolutely. and I think I'd leave it with this one last suggestion what would you say to a friend mm. if the Stop friend being so bloody to... dramatic <laughs> I would have said to myself <laughs> last night <laughs> oh, five, ten. go to bed sort it out tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> yeah what exactly would you say to them whether you journal it or talk it out loud figure out what you would say or do differently apply that to yourself which is where the empathy comes in and the kindness you would just be much more much kinder and maybe offering those slight other viewpoints you'd be like well what if we look at it this way and can't see that for yourself sometimes because you like as I said you just just too in the panic to see the the trees in the moment in that total emotional turmoil yeah exactly yeah, so doing what doing what you need to do to calm yourself down would be a top tip from me, but to allow this logical prefrontal cortex to light back up instead of the dealing with the primitive brain. And we are going to do another podcast about fight, flight and freeze. So if you're not sure about all of that and how that works, we've got another one coming up. Oh, so they all do tend to kind of overlap, which is uh, good because it's all kind of what, what we're talking about with our mind mood and food so it makes sense um thank you margaret so yeah black and white thinking gray thinking let us know what your tendency is in the comments we would love to hear from you and you know if you're if you're watching this on youtube and you can see us let us know if you're enjoying the visuals (laughs) um of you know me holding my little wire so that it doesn't make a crackling noise we need to get a proper mic at some point sorted out we do do. it works it works it works (laughs) (laughs) so give us a little like give us a thumbs up do all of the things hit the subscribe button um to support the podcast so that we can keep creating and you never know if we get a good enough uh size audience we might be able to actually afford a microphone (laughs) for the podcast and then the sound (laughs) quality will improve thank you margaret you're welcome and i'll see you next time we'll see you on the next one happy bonfire night everyone thank you Bye. bye